Hi everyone, um, my name is Yael Simon and I'm going to be presenting the first quarter of a research article called The Implementation of Machine Learning Classification in Remote Sensing. Um, it's an applied review. Um, the link to this article as well as to all of the websites that provided me with background information and more knowledge um, will be linked on the last slide. So there are going to be four main sections of my presentation, the abstract and the introduction. And then we're going to explore two viable methods of machine learning classification, um, support vector machines, and then decision trees. Um, the last three quarters of the article are going to be, um, they're going to be presented by three other classmates of ours. So, very often, if not mostly always, research and scholarly articles will begin with a paragraph that discusses the overview of the topic of the paper. Um, they describe the problems that the, art that the authors are going to address, um, the methods that the authors use, and they describe their most central results. Um, the summary is very helpful if, for instance, you're looking through um, a lot of scholarly articles on a specific topic. So the abstract paragraph will give you a opportunity to find out very quickly what the article is about. So I personally am going to start my presentation um, about the article itself by defining some terms, um, which I believe always helps to improve clarity. So this article uses machine learning classification systems to classify remotely sensed images of land covers. Um, so we should define those three things. Um, remotely sensed images and imagery, to be very simplistic, is pictures taken from a distance, usually from an aircraft or a satellite. So the authors are exploring this remotely sensed imagery of land covers, um, which is the physical material at the surface of the earth. Um, one of the main issues with classifying land covers is that many surveys define similarly named categories in different ways. Um, so for instance, there can be many definitions of forest. Um, often areas without trees can be classified as a forest if the intention is to replant in that area. Um, and there can be areas with many trees that will not be classified as forests because the trees aren't growing fast enough for the definition. So the purpose of labeling land like this is because these images can indicate water quality. Um, they can monitor the effects of climate change. They're used for wildlife management and environmental forecasting. Um, among many other things. So you can see how this is, this can be incredibly helpful. Machine learning, on the other hand, is a, it's an application of artificial intelligence that provides machines or computers the ability to automatically learn and improve um, from its own experience rather than being explicitly programmed in every instance. So let's take um, machine learning in terms of the article at hand. The premise here is that machine learning offers potential for efficient classification of these remotely sensed images. Um, so there are strengths and weaknesses to machine learning as there is with everything. Um, the strengths include the capacity to handle data of high dimensionality. And they also have the ability to map classes with really characteristics. However, the authors have found that implementing these, these systems is not straightforward. Um, we're going to dive into a little bit of why the authors decided to write this article um, in a little bit. So before that, I'm going to just quickly go over how the article itself is structured. So first, the authors are going to discuss six different methods for practical and for a practical and also an applied perspective. As I mentioned before, I'm going to be presenting two of them and our classmates will take over. So the ones that I am presenting are support vector machines and single decision trees. Um, but the authors do go through the random forest, boosted decision trees, 
artificial neural networks and K nearest neighbors. But the authors want their readers who presumably are looking for practical information and practical research to understand the considered issues, um, which they lay out as the choice of algorithm, the training data requirements, user-defined parameter selection and optimization, feature space impacts and reduction, and computational cost. So these will all be explored, but most importantly, the application um, is that the, auto, uh, the authors, I'm sorry, take each type of these machine learning um, classification systems and they test them against two publicly available um, remotely sensed data sets. So let's get into the introduction of the article. First, we are going to talk about why would someone want to use one of these systems? So one, the algorithms are generally able to model complex class signatures, like we said, through their acceptance of a wide variety of predictor data. The systems don't make assumptions about the data distribution, and they are able to produce more accuracy than traditional non-automatic classifiers. So with all of this good, um, especially the higher accuracy, what is stopping data scientists from using this all the time? So there is a barrier for use, which is uncertainty. Um, the authors have found that there is a large amount of uncertainty regarding how to use and implement these techniques effectively. On top of that, the authors found that they, they couldn't find a broad discussion um, with an applied practical perspective, focusing on how to use these algorithms. So they decided to be the ones to write it. Um, so uh, they've pulled, as, as we've discussed, two publicly available data sets. The first is the Indian Pines data set, which is an image of an area in Tippecanoe County, Indiana. And the second data set is an urban land cover of Deerfield Beach, which is in Florida. Um, before jumping into the methods, I'm going to explain um, in overview what the authors are going to do with each method, um, which is first, they're going to apply the classification system to test the data set, and then they're going to evaluate what they get from the machine in, in terms of accuracy, and then they're going to evaluate it for efficiency. So now let's jump right into support vector machines which is the first classification system that the authors explore. Um, but before we start, I would like to give over some background knowledge about support vector machines. So support vector machines are based on the idea of finding a hyperplane that will divide a data set into classes. You can think of a hyperplane as a line that best divides data points on a graph. So if you think about each data point in a two-dimensional graph, the hyperplane can be thought of, again, as a line that separates two categories. That is, data in one category, say trees, um, are on one side of the line, and then data in the second category, let's say corn, is on the other side of the line. It gets much more complicated, but that is the basics. So the farther away the data point from the hyperplane, the more confident we are that it has been classified correctly. Um, if the data point is only, let's say it's only slightly to the left of, of this hyperplane, um, there is more of a concern that maybe because of a margin of error, if the point is supposed to be you know, a little bit to the right, that could end up with the point on the other side of the hyperplane um, and classified in a different section. So the point of, an, of a support vector machine and the method it uses is that it computes the hyperplane as far away as possible from all of the known data points, which given us a margin of error, will keep the data points classified correctly. So there tends to be a very high level of accuracy on clean data sets. Um, however, as the data sets grow and get more complicated, um, and let's say there's overlapping categories, as support vector machines become less efficient. Um, so let's take a look at what the authors do, which is look at the Indian Pines data set. The colors of this picture have been modified, but other than that, this is a remotely sensed image. So if we look here, uh, we can see how it 
how the picture has been broken up into and color coded um, to reflect whether there is alfalfa or corn or hay or grass, etc., growing in this area. So if we take a look at what a support vector machine can do, um, you can see that it does a fairly impressive job of classifying the data. Um, there are a couple of minor differences, which you can see if I flip back and forth. Um, but the overall, because this is a clean and simple data set, the support vector machine, once it was set up, had little problem identifying the agriculture. Um, but it is important to remember that the noisier the data set, the harder it is to be confident in the categorization that you're getting from the support vector machine. The authors then jump into a second type of classification systems, um, which is decision trees. So decision trees are fairly straightforward and the, author, the authors list their findings as advantages and disadvantages. So firstly, um, decision trees can be thought of as complex flow charts. Um, at every question asked, the answers split off in multiple directions. So for example, let's say you needed this machine to identify an animal based on different bits of information that you would give it. So in order to do this, you could set up a decision tree. So in this example, your first question could be, does this animal breathe air? And the answers split. If the answer is no, the animal doesn't breathe air, it's some kind of fish. And if the answer is yes, it does breathe air, you've got to ask another question, such as, does this animal lay eggs? Um, again, the answers will branch off. If um, the answer is that it does lay eggs, it's some kind of bird. And if the answer is that it doesn't lay any eggs, it's some kind of mammal. So you can see how um, useful that this can be. It's almost like a game of 20 questions. In our example, there were only two questions, um, but a machine learning algorithm will construct a decision tree with hundreds. And it tends to be very rapid um, on a machine once you set up the questions and provide the information about, let's say this animal, um, the, the computer can classify it very quickly. However, the downside in this case is something known as overfitting. Overfitting is when a machine learning algorithm learns to distinguish between irrelevant details in the training set of information, so it makes mistakes on the new data. Um, but data scientists, if they see this issue, can always do something which is called prune the tree. Um, they can simplify it a little more, they can add and subtract some questions, and that will help them get more accurate and optimal results. Um, so at this point, we have arrived at the end of my section of the article, um, and I'm gonna turn this over to some of our classmates to continue to explore. Um, the first link here is the link to the article um, that can be found for free online. And the second and third links are websites that helped me understand more about support vector machines and decision trees. And the fourth link, the fourth link, I'm sorry, helped me understand land covers. Um, my email address can be found here as well, and I welcome questions. So um, at this point, I'm going to end, and thank you. Thank you, everybody.